I mean like semi-automated systems that are supposed to be used to use, like one in terms of select and then just
have the hashtag for today. I'm sure you're all aware is uh, Media 2014. Uh, so please feel free to tweet. Also, um, do feel free to move in and out of sessions as you like. I'll be um, timekeeping. Um, and it would be lovely if we could welcome our first speakers to the stage. We have uh, Peter and Jonas from Commons Machine, who will be talking about image by Wikipedia. Need to improve 
in the Wikimedia structures, in the data, have something more uh, easier to use than this. So that it's easy to provide this kind of contribution so that a journalist or a blogger or Twitter, whatever it is, when they find the image, use it, uh, very, very easily can get this right attribution that allows the audience to follow on and follow this back and find more information about uh, whatever this con uh, image is, the context, who created it, what has happened to this image as it, as it has been processed, improved a lot. Uh, of course, there's uh, ether pad for this session as well. Uh, I know that not a lot of you have laptops, so I don't expect this to be filled in a lot. Uh, but if you have any ideas, please add them here. Otherwise, we would like to uh, have a discussion here about how do you react when you get this? Is the image by Wikipedia itself a problem? How can it be improved? How should it be improved? Um, if time allows and interest allows, we can also have, also have a chat a bit about the technology, or we just do that later in the lunch session. So, image by Wikipedia, is that the best we can do? Should it be better?
media just pointed that as perhaps confusing, which you prefer to media comms more specifically uh, where we are right now, where you have a legal duty of attribution. And you mentioned as well that a lot of images um, on Wikimedia Commons are power attribution. Uh, my response to that would be that you should still attribute. Um, because that's simply the right thing to do. Uh, it gives credit to the author, it gives a way for people to relate to that image. Um, but you might not have a legal duty to do so. Yes, um, I the so-called grown child because I yes. went once into difficulty uh, just citing uh, a photo taken from Wikipedia and uh, uh, somebody didn't like it. So um, I then, from then on, as an uh, active user, I make a point out of it to look very carefully up what I'm using. But it is so tedious. Uh, is, do you talk about that this should be some sort of automatic uh, uh, button? Like we have, uh, we have the choice of choosing the um, resolution of the image. So we should have the choice of just saying we have the so-called copyright um, information onto the photo, and then we can use it. Is that something you are have to? So you're talking about the tediousness of actually attributing credit, looking up information uh, so that you can provide the right attribution. And that's exactly what we're dealing with when it comes to machinery, to find the tools that would make this automatic and seamless for people. Because we believe that if you need to do this manually every time, first of all, it's very error from the process of doing that. Um, but secondly, if we can actually automate that and make it uh, happen as you copy an image, for instance, um, then we can start to see this on a more What I was going to say is, in terms of what you should do to attribute someone, uh, if you're outside the United States, you've already got the law, the concept of moral rights, which requires that you do actually mention who your is, if by name or if they've chosen the suit of this is. It's separate from Twitter Commons, as it's something you have to do, so. Yeah, so you're saying the fight for a view into license uh, doesn't specifically say that you need that view, you, you might have that legal obligation for us. I think uh, part of the problem is also that we at Wikipedia doesn't offer proper attribution in our articles. And the people, many of the people who are, who are doing mistakes in the outside world are doing these mistakes because they look at Wikipedia and see, hey, and they use an image that seems to be free somehow and uh, put this source Wikipedia down there and feel happy. Of course, they are not, but uh, this. I think, I know it's juristic, um, it is from uh, a legal point of view, is it <coughs> may be right to say, okay, the whole thing is under a free license, so we don't have a specific for each image to be licensed, but for the reuse, user, it's, it's not that obvious. Okay, so let me take that one. So, I mean, what you're saying is that in, in Wikipedia, generally, the, the attribution might not happen as like it, so we should look a little bit ourselves as well. Um, but uh, so my question today is, when you have a link from an, an article on Wikipedia to Wikimedia Commons inventory, use that image, then people can always click through and read more about that image. Um, is that sort of reference enough? Um, do we actually need to push the information about who created and uploaded the image to the place where it's actually viewed? Uh, or is it enough to just put URL on I think for the unsuspecting uh, viewer, the not Wikipedia, it should be. Because he doesn't know that he has to click on the image to uh, find the attribution. Yeah. But he, he, he just follows that, hey, I see the image is there, there's no attribution, okay, I can also use it without attribution. Mm -hmm. That's what the outside, that's what the non Wikipedia thinks. All right, so for the uninitiated, it doesn't matter that they need to click on the image, then you might actually need to put that information more public. Which again goes back to the point of satisfying the problem. I am just a I'm a photographer too. Uh, a lot of stuff myself is on the um, comments. A lot of newspapers, it has been said, they don't know how to attribute right. And I, I, I look at the tool that you've made already, and it's so logical that it, it should be the first place to go to. 
the newspapers, enough people that want to reuse it, don't have an excuse anymore. Because a lot of reaction I get, oh, I didn't know how to do it. What you're already solving is like, there's no way of how to do it. What has been mentioned already is, is other rights. And maybe you should also include some information about other rights. People, um, I have sometimes people that reuse my photos in web templates. So also photos that I take at Wikimedia right now, and they forget that apart from the attribution for me, they would have to ask one of you that's in photo for your portrait rights, for your permission for your photo to be reused in something like that. If you're building a tool like that, maybe you have some extra space, like, okay, you can use it because it's Creative Commons license, but are you sure they can use the photo? If there are a person in it, then you need to think about those licenses. Um, most of the talk has been about images, but the focus of comments for the next couple of months or years will also be the use of video and audio, and how to attribute that, and what, what are you going to do with, with uh, SoundCloud, like Flickr is connected to comments already, and what kind of attribution do you need to do there, uh, and, and Vimeo and YouTube. So um, I'm not sure if you're also looking at those types of comments. Um, okay, so what it's saying here is well, there are other rights connected to an image than the, the, the pure copyright as such, um, and that, that needs to be catered to in some way as well. Um, and you're also mentioning what we're going to do about videos, what we're going to be do about audio, which is all going to be part of the media commons as we go forward. Um, you mentioned SoundCloud, Vimeo, YouTube. Um, so, from our perspective, uh, we started with images because um, people are much more familiar with metadata contextual information about images. Um, there are some standards for this for audio, obviously, and media as well, that are a bit less known and a little bit less useful. Um, but that's also an opportunity, right, to actually standardize that and actually bring that in order. Um, so it's something we're very keen to look at, I and mean, people are willing to talk to us about video and audio, which is, you know, very interesting to hear your thoughts. Can, 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 can I ask, who many, uh, how many of you take photos and did you put online? <laughs> okay, that's a lot of people. How many of you put your name in the exit information? That's what I mean. You have the exit information that's embedded in your photo. Once it's in there, also other people have less of an excuse not to attribute you because your name is attached to the photo already. Um, so you as photographers need to be educated too how to put the right information in the metadata that's already embedded in your photo. Yeah. Yes, thank you. We're coming up with a school of metadata. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've just had a few more minutes now, so... It was not mentioned after the first session, so it's usual. Oh, yeah. I think that's a good point about the metadata, definitely. Whether they need to be as opposed to having its own words.
Platz zu finden, wo ich Matthias und den Zwillinge sein kann. <lacht> Um, which article was invoked. 
Um, and there were 21 jail sentences. Um, one can assume that in this case there were massive scale copyright violations and not just one time offenses against take images taken from Wikimedia Commons. But at least looking at the law, there's no reason why um, you couldn't go to jail if you just took Wikimedia Commons images without permission or without um, adhering to the license terms. Um, and you should keep in mind that um, uh, most of the persecution only happens if the rights holder um, actually finds a complaint at the police. Um, other copyright law in other countries is rather similar. Um, it's not just civil law, it's also criminal law. Um, let me interrupt for a few questions. Um, purpose one is to see if you're still awake, and uh, second is to see um, how, how good you are in terms of uh, copyright and other questions. First question, do you know what has been the best place to hide in history? What is the best place to hide? Does anyone have a guess? In your nice idea, there is an even better place. Uh, I got a hint for you. In terms of condition. Yes! <laughs> is the end user license agreement. The one that you sign in your open up uh, application from Apple, for example. This is an, actually, this is the first part of the end user license agreement um, that you sign with Apple. And of course, you all read these stuff. Um, every time it gets updated. Um, maybe this is an explanation, but if Osama bin Laden had been hiding in the end user license agreement instead of a butter box, he would still be alive. <laughs> <laughs> um, to, to prove this point even further, there was a company selling um, um, software and they included a section in their end user license agreement saying that the first person contacting them with reference to the end user license agreement section gets a financial reward. <laughs> <laughs> they sold 3,000 copies of their software until the first person uh, sent them an email and got a check of uh, $1,000. So, um, <laughs> nice move, and, and um, I think this point is actually not seen as proven. Um, I mentioned this because of the second question. How many of you have ever read the license? The print comments license? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yes! Well, I, yes, I see. A surprisingly high number of, of hands, yes. Uh, and and uh, at least there's a Kate Ball sitting over there, so I believe her when she has <laughs> uh, um, Kate, this, this question is to you. How many of you have found the spelling error? <laughs> 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 or see it? You created a license <laughs> Kat has mentioned that um, <laughs> It, it remains there because um, if you change the license, it is very now the hash, the, the cryptographic hash for the license text would change and, and some kind of havoc would arise. So this, this, <laughs> this thing is going to stay um, and quite a bit more things. And of course, there's version 4 by now, so there is no point in, in updating this. Um, and this is a serious question. How many of you know what the obligations are? if you want to reuse an image with a license under the Creative Commons license. Some right. Okay, there should be more hands going on. <laughs> um, and, and quite frankly, um, it seems that only a few people care. Only a few people um, at even attempt to, to create a proper uh, attribution. Um, this is a random example from a newspaper. Um, like a, company whose existence is built to some extent on the existence of um, um, of, of, in, uh, uh, of, of uh, copyright law to some extent and what they did was simply taking a picture of Creative Commons uh, and saying photo Wikimedia. Um, that's, that's not even the attempt. And of course it's a copyright violation because there, if it, if the image is properly licensed and they have re-licensed, and if they didn't uh, obtain the rights of usage uh, from the author directly um, bypassing the Creative Commons license, there is uh, section seven of the, the license term, then termination of rights. So whenever they fail to comply with the license terms, they lose the rights to use the image, and then it becomes 
a violation of copyright. And there is, going back, there is criminal law applying here. Um, so it, it's, it's, it's really impressive to see um, the, the kind of disconnect between the, the, um, the, 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 the possible consequences and um, the kind of uh, uh, level of attention being, being paid. This is, um, and it's, it's hard for you to read, um, this is an attempt how the attribution could look like, and best to our knowledge, this is a proper license um, attribution, and this is something that um, um, that, that uh, could work and um, could be um, could could, uh, could um, um, not trigger the determination of the license agreement. And in order to allow you to focus on more important stuff than just following copyrights um, by the by the book is a tool I'm going to present here. Um, it's online now. You can access it from the Wikimedia Foundation lab service. It's um, a tool for file reviews. Um, we have a fancy German name for it. Lizenz uh, <laughs> 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 right. Um, so this is the attempt to, to add another German language um, term to the English language um, next to Blitzkrieg <laughs> and, and um, <laughs> <laughs> and this tool is going to make your life uh, easier, we hope. That is the URL. I'm going to keep this slide up and, and we'll give you the, um, the URL afterwards as well. Um, the, the attempt is that you, or the, the idea is that you only enter um, the URL of the image. Uh, you found in Wikimedia Commons, and then the computer tries to give you a, a legal, valid um, attribution tag, uh, allowing you to um, focus on the other stuff, like writing an article or um, doing something with your life. Um, it also allows you to. Um, well, we, we, thought we, we, tried to, we tried to imagine how people usually approach us when they ask for, for guidance regarding uh, reuse. And in most cases, um, we simply get emails saying, well, there is an article about Berlin and there is an image and we would like to, to reuse it. Uh, ignoring the fact that the Wikipedia article on Berlin has roughly 40 or 50 images. So if you just enter the URL from a Wikipedia article, uh, it will just present you all the images found in this article, and you can click on the article, uh, on, the, on the image that you read about. The next thing is something that you can't avoid. It's, um, it's following the book of copyright um, and asking you, in this case in German, um, about the, the intended um, scenario in which you want to reuse it. Because there is um, there are consequences. If you want to reuse the image in the internet, um, there is a tool called Hyperlinks. Uh, so the tool is going to make use of, of the existence of hyperlinks. If you want to use, use the image um, in the physical world, in the newspaper, then the, the uh, URLs or URIs are given as plain text. There's also an option about um, limitations and exceptions. So that if um, your uh, local copyright law allows you to use an image without um, adherence to the um, Creative Commons license, you can uh, click this option as well, but um, it rightfully points out that in most cases the limitations and exceptions are quite limited, and then you can go back and, and still use the, the license term path, um, even if there might be the option that you um, simply can use the, the, the exception for quotation or something. Uh, and also you can click on, uh, I don't want to actually republish the image, I just want to use it internally uh, without showing it to uh, third parties. Mm -hmm. And in this case, the, the tool is going to give you um, the proper answer that you don't have to follow the license terms um, because it's actually not um, a scenario covered by copyright. So, if you answer, I would like to use the uh, tool in the internet, the license, um, the, 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 the byline is going to be hyperlinked. Um, there is a button that you can click to get um, um, HTML in order to, to for, for embedding it, including the license terms. And you can also get the, uh, the raw text um, for cut and paste, for example, if you're working in a CMS or if you're working uh, in some kind of desktop publishing tool um, that you need um, paintings for. Right now, 
the tool only works for images from Wikimedia Commons, and it works for images under a free license. So if it, if, it, if you found an image under a non-open, uh, non-free image license from from the Creative Commons, um, then technically you are on your own. If you found the image on some a place somewhere else that hasn't been uploaded to Wikimedia Commons, then this tool right now can fully help you. However, there is a fallback scenario in which you can. Um, enter the, the information on your own. Um, the tool will not automatically detect the license used. It will not um, um, enter the, the name of the author by its own, but it will give you the, 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 uh, the option to enter it on your own, and the result will be the same. Um, but then again, it's, it's um, your manual work required. Um, this tool has been um, developed and written by the software development team at Wikimedia Germany. Um, some of the authors are in this room or on this conference. So whenever you see um, Abraham, if you see Jens, uh, if you see um, part of his team, give them a hug um, <laughs> um, and, and tell them um, uh, what you need, um, what you need else um, from them uh, because they are here to help. Uh, and they are doing tremendous work. Second part, it goes to Magnus Manske, um, because um, a couple of years ago, he wrote the first prototype, a kind of proof of concept, um, to see if it's actually possible to, um, to, to um, extract license um, information and to create a byline. There's, there's um, a tremendous amount of, of inspiration coming from this tool that has been um, used for um, the tool I'm presenting today. Um, and Magnus has been doing amazing work um, on so many fields, so you should give him a hug uh, anyway. <laughs> um, then there's, there's legal advice. We ask lawyers to, to look over the development of this tool and to tell us if, um, if the, the advice given by, by the, the license generator um, is, um, is correct. We try to simplify it as much as possible. However, we cannot alter existing copyright law. The, 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 yes, this yes. is the next step. Right. <laughs> um, but, but technically, um, we still have to follow copyright law. We can't, uh, can't give you shortcuts and loopholes where there are one. Um, so thanks to uh, Team Jäger and GPD, uh, who are a law firm in Berlin, um, they have been doing tremendous work. And the next credit goes to you because um, you, as creators or photographers, you're the reason why we exist as Wikimedia and this tool exists because uh, without Wikimedia Commons, without the, the, the vast trophies in, 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 um, in uh, diamonds and, and um, stuff in Wikimedia Commons, there wouldn't be a need for reuse. Um, so thank you. Uh, please continue. Please do the work you do because it's going to make the world awesome. Um, you can get a hug from me if you go to, to GitHub, look at the source code, um, and try to um, come up with improvements. If you file bug reports, if you um, give us any kind of suggestions how to make the tool better. Um, there's, by the way, there's the upper hand. Could you raise your hand? He's the guy. He's right. <laughs> Um, right now, this tool is um, not internationalized in terms of language and and um, and um, uh, jurisdiction. So the tool is is working for you if you are intending to use it right within Germany. Um, it might fail you if you're living outside Germany, here where other copyright terms apply. Um, you're on your own in this case, um, but feel free to send us. Adaptation. Send us tools um, and, and improvements. Um, how this tool could work and create um, um, uh, good results for any other country than Germany, because it's an international effort, and we hear that the problems um, somewhere else are the same. Um, thank you so much. Um, I'm open for questions now. I'm open for questions later. Um, and um, if there's only wish I have is, is please use the tool, give us feedback, and have fun. Thank you. Um, I see a considerable overlap in this tool with uh, gadgets like the 
stock photo we use and um, media viewer. Has there been any thought into put into um, basically doing much of this stuff and sharing all that between these three projects? Because that would seem really efficient to me. The question is um, overlap of, of uh, functionality and the integration into uh, Wikimedia Commons. If the tool remains only at this place, uh, only a few people will see it, and only the people who are already convinced and, and um, are committed to um, to following the law will see it. So in the long term, this tool will be useful if it's being integrated into uh, Wikimedia Commons into the places where people discover images. Um, I would be hesitating to, um, to to demand the inclusion of the tool that only works for Germany. So um, in the long run, yes, it should go to Wikimedia Commons, it should go to Wikipedia, um, and it should be integrated into the places that already exist where it says, reuse this image. Um, in order to do so, um, the tool needs to become um, um, internationalized. Um, so, yes, I, I fully agree. You, you've covered an echo to create problems. How does it deal with the sort of more exotic licenses, free art, KFDL, legacy stuff? Does it just give up for <laughs> That's an excellent question. There is. Um, <laughs> right now, the, the licenses and, and license, uh, copyright conditions we support are. Um, public domain, CC0, uh, CCBY uh, 2.0, uh, CCBY 3.0, and CCBY 3.0 uh, um, localized in the German condition. Um, CCBY is a CCBY is a 3.0 um, and 4.0. Um, right now, we do not support um, um, licenses other than that. We are open for suggestions. However, this is um, right. I'm, I'm slightly hesitating about the growing slew of licenses on Wikimedia Commons. Um, so, but this is a problem that has to be solved somewhere else. This tool can, um, in the long run, we should support the licenses accepted by Wikimedia Commons. Um, and in the long run, there should be a conversation at Wikimedia Commons um, what licenses should be accepted. Um, because every time you add a new license, um, you create com complexity and you create the possibility of um, um, of incompatibilities. Um, so, yes, if you want to uh, modify this tool to allow the um, free artistic license, um, you are very much invited to do so. Um, this has been outside our, our resources right now, but um, it should be done by someone. Um, this uh, case is you have to use it only for testing. Is it right only for testing, or it's right only uh, it's right uh, for using uh, <coughs> real? The question is, is is this tool ready for prime time? And I'm I'm rather uh, confident that this tool is going to give you valid um, attribution. Our results. So whenever the tool gives you an output, um, you remain out of jail, um, so to speak. Um, you might discover places where the tool says we can't give you a result. Um, go consult someone else. Um, <laughs> but at least I feel comfortable um, telling anyone, yes, by now you can use this tool um, to see if it can help you. Um, so. We are beyond the kind of early stage where um, it, it is still cutting edges and um, <coughs> cutting in one in hand. Yet, yeah, it's. I'm I'm, I'm fairly optimistic um, in this regard. Uh, since the tool gives uh, attribution according to the Creative Commons license, and you stress that uh, it is tied to the German jurisdiction, could you possibly give an example? where uh, Creative Commons at, at license attribution works different in Germany than in the other private places. use, private use, for example, can be different <laughs> <laughs> um, There are a couple of pitfalls in other jurisdictions that deal with um, the, the way 
um, for example, uh, copyright has been calculated. Um, there are controls <coughs> regarding the, um, for example, kind of cascading um, copyright. It's a picture of, of an object that is, um, um, well, it's, <coughs> it, it, can, it can work in, in other jurisdictions, but um, there's a difference between um, the possibility of um, the tool working and the certainty of, of the tool working. Um, so at least I want to see um, one or two educated opinions from, from lawyers familiar in these jurisdictions um, to say, well, it will also work in France or it will also work in the United States. Um, and of course, if you've got the tool, um, it will also give you um, certain hints and remarks on copyright. Uh, for example, telling you um, what the um, um, telling you what the um, um, the terms and conditions of, of uh, limitations and exceptions are, and, it, and these are usually quite different uh, in, in, in in many countries. So. Um, Things might go wrong someplace else um, other than Germany, um, and of course there might be some some very specialized cases where, um, for example, the, the the content in the description field of Wikimedia Commons images is uh, misleading or wrong, um, which might result in wrong um, um, uh, advices in, in, in this tool. Yes, um. uh, I work for the Swiss National Library. <coughs> We have uploaded um, public domain pictures. And what we uh, would prefer, or what the National Library would prefer, that um, not only comes by public domain and you can do what you want with it because there's, there's no obligation, there's also a recommendation of how to attribute. So say, oh, this the original file is, or the original picture is in the, in the uh, Swiss. National Library, and, and this would I prefer. That not only comes out oh, this is public domain. So, if you want attribute it, maybe on a scientific reason, then write it. The original is there. And this is what I would recommend. Um, yes, you are right. In many cases. Um, it is advisable not only to include the information that you need to include, but also the information that is um, important for the reader to understand and to go further. So if the image is in public domain, um, it is my personal advice to also include the source um, on Wikimedia Commons and the source of this image from a third party. Um, yes. Um, and. This could be a valuable um, addition to, to such a tool um, to include information um, beyond the, the basic requirements. Um, I've got one minute, uh, I, yeah, it's one minute left, so there's one question, comments, or you get just one minute more spare time for drinking water. Um, maybe a pause. <laughs> sorry, sorry to do so. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, I'm looking forward for your feedback uh, in the coming days, and uh, I guess the love is not you. Thank you.
Media Foundation, that's the legal team, but also the community's goals. Uh, we want to be able to operate our sites without disruption and without legal repercussions for, uh, for our users. And we're, we're all very proud that with our, with our ability to comply with copyright law, we spend a significant amount of time discussing and designing policies and OTRS systems as well as the other talks uh, that you will be seeing at, at this conference today. But our mission goes beyond just complying with the bare minimum of the law. Uh, our goal is to not only host, but be able to freely share and distribute content and allow it to be reused around the world. And to achieve that, we've written policies as a community that allow us to go deeper than formal copyright law. Uh, we have to grapple with ambiguities. We have to answer questions from conflicting jurisdictions. And we have to deal with copyright laws that people ignore elsewhere on the internet. So when you hear a lot of new topics at our talk and others, uh, the distinction between both our basic goal of keeping the site legal, as well as our mission, uh, is why the sum of stuff might seem new. So we're going to discuss a few complex copyright questions that we regularly see. Uh, and you may be familiar with them from your work on, on our projects. First, we're going to discuss fair use, and specifically how English Wikipedia has tried to handle the complexities of fair use. And we'll discuss the distinction between copyright and trademarks. And shortly at the end, we'll discuss a little bit about uh, the Freedom of Panorama issue and the Uruguay Round Agreement uh, Implementation Act, or the URAA, as you probably know.
Let's say the super mayor. He's reaching there. I'm so confused. Yes, okay. Yeah. If it's okay. Yeah. About what resolution? So, what caption? Michelle and other gave us sort of a, an example where we actually know the answer because a court has told us what fair use is. Uh, in this example, it's important to understand that these factors are only guidelines and courts are free to adopt them. So uh, in particular circumstances, it's judged on a case-by-case -case basis. And there's some uh, freedom for judges to use some judgment in determining fair use and developing fair use case law. So in general, fair use goes along four factors as Michelle outlined. The purpose and character of the use, put these out. The purpose and character of the use, is it commercial or is it a nonprofit educational that's sometimes discussed is the use transformative, the nature of the copyrighted work, the amount and substantiality of the portion used in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole. This could be sort of a cropped version of the image or someone in the audience said uh, a lower resolution version. Or the use's effect on the market for, for value of the copyrighted work. And in the previous example, uh, Michelle mentioned licensing revenue was discussed in the court case. That actually goes into the fair use determination. So in the US, these are the fair use factors. They do vary by country. Uh, we'll touch on that very briefly at the end. But when you compare them to English Wikipedia's uh, fair use factors for this very image being used on the Superman article, uh, they found that it was appropriate to use. In the English's fair use, uh, English Wikipedia's fair use analysis was very similar to the US fair use law. But there's a few notable uh, distinctions. For example, English Wikipedia requires that there be shown there's no free equivalent of the copyrighted content, and that the content be pre previously published outside of Wikipedia. These aren't requirements that come from fair use law, but they're requirements that help us ensure that we're compliant with fair use. We have these Wikipedia-specific guidelines because our goal is not just to have a legal encyclopedia, but we want to have an encyclopedia that can be legally reused and shared elsewhere in the world. Fair use rationale for the Superman image include the fact that there's no free alternative for the likeness of the character Superman. He's protected by trademark. We'll discuss that later. It's also a low-resolution version of the comic book cover. It's not a full comic book. It's no supplement for issue number 204 of Superman. Uh, it doesn't limit the copyright owner's ability to license it for other covers. And the image itself was used for promotional purposes. It was intended to, to announce this new version of Superman. And it involved both a notable artist and a notable writer. So it's something that Wikipedia would like to discuss.
last as long as the work is, or the trademark is being used in commerce to identify the goods or services. So that means trademark are potentially indefinite protections on works. And finally, trademarks are often very simple. They're often logos, which means you have to ask the question, are they too simple for copyright protection? That could, this comes up a lot on commons and discussions. Copyright, copyright law requires some minimal quantum of creativity. Trademark law does not. And when you discuss trademarks, you're often trying to figure out, is this a copyright issue at all? Um, and these, these analyses are sort of important to keep this same. Go through a couple of examples. Number one here is the FIFA World Cup. Uh, a lot of you soccer fans, slash football fans, will appreciate um, and recognize. Now, just a show of hands, do you think that this is protected by trademark? And how many do you think it's protected by copyright? Okay, so I think you're. All right, what about um, those who think it's either? Well, FIFA claims both copyright and trademark protection in this image. Um, how much of that has been tested, we're not entirely sure and will vary from country to country. Um, but the trademark protection outlives the, um, sorry, the trademark protection will definitely outlive the copyright protection. Um, trademarks, as Stephen said, last indefinitely as long as you use and enforce them, which FIFA certainly does. Um, <laughs> well, copyrights do expire. So, as another example of the Best Western logo is for a hotel chain, um, how many do you think is protected by trademark? Protected by copyright? Which jurisdiction? <laughs> <laughs> this is important. Yeah, it is, it is an important question. And we have to answer that not just in one jurisdiction, right? Because we're trying to deliver a website around the world. So when we deal with questions of jurisdiction, sometimes I, I don't mention which one it is because you could talk about all of them. Um, I talk about the US because that's where the servers that we protect are located. But the users using that might be located elsewhere, and our reusers might be located elsewhere either. Um, so what, what we see here is a logo that has been submitted to the Copyright Office in the United States um, for registration, and that registration was denied. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's not protected by any copyrights, but it does mean that it is possible that, it is the, that it's an administrative body in the United States, which doesn't have sort of binding authority. And it is something that is a registered trademark, you know, as they put the little circle R down at the bottom. So it is possibly protected by, by copyright, but unlikely, and not protected, or it is protected by trademark. A couple more examples. Number two, the Nike Android logo, 
but they're not asserting it anymore. They're not sending cease and desist letters. So despite the fact that it is being used like a trademark, it doesn't appear to be protected as well. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, Mr. Works 
usually requiring a license from the creator of the work. So the freedom of panorama is the term we use to refer to these exceptions that allow photographs of public works that would otherwise be considered a derivative.
Yeah, no, he said that, but then he said take two rows from there, so that's took just took two rows. Have you got 20 here then? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you're going to come into it. That was the coincidence. Yeah, you're going to come into it. 
effect on January 1, 1992, but between the passage of that law and the effect of the Soviet Union collapse, which interrupts everything, and later on with progress, it retroactively restored common rights so we have other victims of Stalin, Persians, and Jews, and this is a problem. But as far as the Soviet Union had already gone in, the public domain would like to point out the past. And it made very good arguments. So we have the responsibility of the commission. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's, good. it's good to know that you're 